Hello and welcome to the third part of my series where I show you the PC that I'm building for 2021. And this is the bad boy. This is it. This is the most expensive component in my PC build by far. It is the graphics card, as you can see, and it is the Gigabyte Aorus GeForce RTX 1390 Master. Now this actually matches the Gigabyte Aorus X570 Master board, which I picked up as well, the motherboard which is just a happy coincidence. I never set out to get another component from the same range. It's just what happened because this is the graphics card which was available. So what I'd like to do in this video is talk about specifications, its features, and then we'll do an unboxing, we'll have a look at the card. In a future video, I'll do some tests and we'll see how this actually performs in day-to-day -day use. But in this video, I really just want to do an unboxing and show you the card itself. Before I go on though, I just want to talk about why I've picked up a 3090 in the first place because right now I think most people would agree that the 3080 is the card to get certainly at the higher end if you're looking for the best bang for your buck the sweet spot is the 3080. The 3090 is twice the price for about 15% more performance and it does offer 24 gigabytes of VRAM instead of 10 gigabytes which does help me with video editing but the real reason that I bought this is because there are no 3080s right now. Certainly here in the UK, they are like unicorns and it doesn't matter how hard you try, it's really, really difficult to get a 3080 right now. So I got a 3090 and I'm not disappointed. So looking at the front here, you can see RGB Fusion, of course it's Gigabyte, Max Covered Cooling, 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X uh, VRAM, four year warranty, but you do have to actually register this to get that. I'm not sure what the default wa warranty is if you don't do that. Uh, maybe one or two. So at the back you can see it's got three display ports, three HDMI. We'll have a look at that, the specifications, but you are only allowed to use four. I say only, but it is worth bearing that in mind. Um, it's quite an interesting graphics card. It's got three fans. You've got obviously got the RGB lights and you've got an LCD display which you can customize. You can display images, animations. You can display the GPU temperature, etc. It's quite interesting what this offers. The master range is basically the second most expensive uh, range for Gigabyte and their Aorus range of components. It's one below extreme. So I'd say this is kind of middle to the higher end of the 3090 range. It's not at the bottom, but it's not at the top. It's kind of sitting in the middle somewhere. So this is the official website of the 3090 master. Now I'll look at the features and all the fancy spinning fans in a second. I want to quickly talk about specifications. So out of the box, this has a core clock of 1785 and a memory clock of 19,500. Now, as with all 3080s, 3090s, etc., these values can be overclocked. And I do recommend that you do play around with the settings, you know, use something like MSI Afterburner and try and get more performance from your card. Now, here in the UK, the 3090 ranges from between £1,400 to two grand, depending on the variation of the, you know, the card that you pick up. And when you pay more money, generally speaking, you get better overclocking potential. Now, that's not always true. There are some lower end cards that perform very well, they overclock very well, and there's more expensive cards that don't have great cooling. But generally speaking, you get better fans when you pick up one of the more expensive cards and you do get more overclocking potential. But bear in mind that you're paying a lot more money for just a little bit extra more. I mean, you can pay like 400, 500 more and only get like 5% extra performance or something like that. So bear that in mind. So this does have six uh, video outputs, as you can see here, three display ports, 1.4a. Uh, you've got two HDMI 2.1 and one HDMI 2. And you know, it's the middle one. Uh, you can use four of these at the same time. Now, as far as power goes, this says that it requires 750 watts. Now, you will see other 3090 cards, uh, 1390 cards that say use an 850 watt supply, and those require three eight pin connectors. So this one requires 16 pins, I guess, two eight pin connectors. Some other cards do require three eight pins, and those generally do offer better overclocking performance. I think I'll be okay with what this offers. I've got no doubt that I'll be happy with it. But just bear in mind, there are other cards out there that do require a little bit more power. And bear that in mind when you're planning out your build. So comes with a four-year warranty, 
supports SLI. It's all good. But let's jump back over to the features and we'll see what's going on here. So scroll down here. So all the core features here, all the, the main features here, this is kind of what's covered on the box. And we'll go down, design concept, that's all good. Okay, so you can see here it's offering max covered cooling. Wind claw design, I mean, this is all just marketing stuff at this point. Alternate spinning is quite interesting that you can do that. Reduce the turbulence of adjacent fans, increase air pressure. So that's interesting. It'll be interesting to see at least how it actually performs. Uh, screen cooling as well. Uh, vapor chamber and heat pipe, angular fin design. Now, the next part, of course, the LCD display. Now, I guess this comes under the kind of gimmicky end of buying a graphics card. But it is quite useful to be able to see the graphics card GPU temperature. I think that's probably the most practical way to use that. But you can put anything there. You can put an image, you can put animations, you can put anything, anything you want. So that's quite handy. And it's not something that all cards have. Uh, RGB Fusion 2.0. Every uh, computing company offers this, like Oris have got Aura Sync, etc. It's not for everyone, you know what I mean? Not everyone likes RGB and not everyone likes RGB Fusion, but... Yes, it's there, it's fancy, it's shiny, and I'm sure it works well. So, yeah, metal backplate. It's got a dual BIOS here. You can put it into overclocking mode or silent mode. I've seen a lot of uh, cards that actually offer that, so it'll be interesting to see how it works. It does say here that the default mode is OC. Six outputs, power indicators there as well, and over there, NV link. For whatever reason, the 3080 range doesn't support SLI anymore, but the 3090 does. Um, yeah, friendly PCV, Oris Engine, Extreme Overclocking. So this is being marketed as an overclocking card. It does have that fancy LCD display, but how much does that matter? I don't know. We'll find that out in another video. At this point, what I'd like to do is open up the box and we'll see what's actually in here. Okay, so we're now on to the fun part. Need to get this open. Quite simple, just open this part here. Opens up and opens up like so. There we go. So we'll get this in the shot. It's actually covering the screen there. Um, so in here we have, so we've got a quick guide and we've got instructions on how to register for the four year warranty. And this, as the card, here we go. So just double check, there's nothing else in the box here apart from this oldest sticker at the top here. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. My God, this is heavy. <laughs> this is big and this is heavy. Wow. So it's a big jump for me coming from a two slot 1080 Ti to this three slot monster. This is an absolute brick. But you can see all the video inputs there. Three HDMI, three, uh, three HDMI, three display port. We've got the three fans there. And we've got the display up here as well. So get a better look at this. So here we go, the wrapper is off. So that's the LCD screen right there. Um, and you can see the card at the back here. This is the actual card at the back. All of this is just to cool down that card. This is essentially just one big mass of heat sink with fans. We've got the two eight pin connectors there. And obviously we've got the PCI slot down the bottom. So, this is where you change it. This is the little switch here that goes from OC mode or silent mode in the BIOS. So this is the dual BIOS mode. So this does feel like a premium card. And I would say, you know, looking at the back of the chassis here, I would say that everything is constructed really well. And, it's, you know, it looks like it's actually quite easy to get this back plate off if you did want to do some water cooling or anything like that. Um, it's really nice design. And it is heavy. So... Let's prove how heavy it is. So the 1390 Master weighs in at a whopping 1.892 kilograms or 1,892 grams. 
which is four pounds, 2.7 ounces. This is an absolute beast. It weighs about the same as a gaming laptop or about 900 grams heavier than my XPS laptop. That's insane. So it's no surprise that this will be the heaviest thing which I connect to my motherboard. Not even close. You can use a PCI Express riser and you are seeing a lot of people doing that now because of GPU sag because these things are so heavy that over time they start to sag on the motherboard. So there's a lot of solutions coming out to try and tackle that. But yeah, as far as weight goes, this is a heavy beast. So I hope you've all enjoyed this look at the Gigabyte Aorus GeForce RTX 1390 Master. I think the build quality looks really good here. It's constructed well. Visually, I think it looks good with the LCD screen. I'm sure it'll look good once the lights are all flashing, etc. But I guess it's kind of plain as well. I mean, it's just a black graphics card with some basic graphical art there. But the most important thing is performance. And looking at specs, looking at features, it looks like this will perform well. But that is, of course, something which I will tackle in a future video. So please stay tuned for my next one where I'll be looking at storage and I'll be looking at the all-in-one cooler, which I picked up as well. And then after that, we'll start building the PC. But thanks for watching. If you get any questions about this graphics card, please do post a comment below. And until next time, take care.